Hey y'all, it's Kobe R. Rice and I'm back again for another weekly creative update. So this is episode number 99 of the epic fantastical journey of a black female cypher writer. I, as I said before, am Kobe R. Rice, novelist, game writer, narrative designer, screenwriter, TV writer, director, aspiring filmmaker, dramaturg, and a whole bunch of other stuff that I can't remember right now because my life is just crazy like that. Um, but I am back again. And actually, this time I am back on time, thankfully, to give you guys another update on the creative milestones that I've achieved for last week. So... Thankfully, I have been able to, or at least I've had a little bit more time to establish um, my re-residency or to re-establish my residency um, at masterclass.com. Um, and you guys know that I am huge on extracurricular academic and intellectual pursuits, meaning that anything that's going on within the university, if you're an undergrad, graduate, doctoral student, med student, law student, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is you're doing is great, but it's always great to get your education supplemented externally by other sources, other places to, to take courses, other books, other blogs. Um, Okay, sorry, the camera got frozen for a second. So sorry if there's like crazy stuff going on. But you guys know that I am huge on basically being able to get your education from a variety of resources. And so for me, one of those resources and a really lovely resource at that is masterclass.com. So I have resumed taking some classes there uh, for filmmaking. I just started my sort of novel writing, creative writing, storytelling track. <laughs> Neil Gaiman has a course there. Dan Brown has a course there. R.L. Stein, Margaret Atwood, Judy Bloom. So that's really an amazing collection of awesome novelists and authors that you can just learn from and just get a different perspective from. So I've done that. Um, I haven't delved as deeply into Creative Uni as I've wanted to. Unfortunately, again, yes, once again, last week, we were grappling with another round of the sniffles and the head colds and whatever was happening. I don't know what's going on, guys. Luckily, it's missed me thus far. Knock on wood. I'm knocking on wood right now. But um, being as though like my child was ill, I had to like take time away and obviously like be a mom and take care of her. So... As I mentioned before, I'm not really sure what's happening um, in what's going on in, in the air, in the environment, in the ethos or just whatever, where <laughs> there's just like this weird cycle of like head colds and stuff that's coming in and out of the house. But it's really slowing both me down and her down and like the creative journey down and the only cue I can take from that, guys, is that more and more self-care needs to be integrated into my daily lifestyle. So every single time something like that happens, I am forced to double down all the more on the self-care and focusing on my domestic life, which was a nice sort of change of pace this weekend. But that's one of the big reasons why I wasn't really able to dive into Creative Uni as much as I as much as I usually want to, um, and also why, <laughs> just to sort of foreshadow what's coming up, why I haven't gotten as much done this week as I usually get done. Um, and I actually have more thoughts on that, but those are coming. Writing, um, honestly, not much writing has been has been happening this past week. I did get. Almost 500 words finished for another series I'm working on. You guys have heard of the of the Asylum series. And yes, yeah, so I've gotten some headway on that series. But most of the things that I accomplished this past week had more to do with play, like creative play. And that for me includes world building, plotting, and just doing a lot of creative activities and brainstorming around the different series I have out in the ether. So I did a lot of world building and plotting for the Asylum series. And then I did more of the same thing for the prequel series I'm planning for the Books of Ezekiel series. <laughs> Don't kill me, okay? I know that you guys are like, what? You already, you already have like five different series you're working on. 
I know, I just needed to cleanse my palate. I've been kind of tired, you know, just recuperating from these first three months of the year being insane. You know, April was crazy with me recuperating from like, you know, just again, all of the, <laughs> the head cold illness that's going around. And I just needed to find some mild, but creatively exciting way back into engaging in my daily creativity and that was just my way back in so just to give you guys a little bit of the skinny on what this prequel series entails um there is the books of ezekiel series as you guys know there are and that's going to be anywhere from a 40 to 50 book 50 book series when it's done um there are offshoots and spin-offs of the series that are directly connected to the main stories events like we'll get to see caleb Rye storyline at a certain point in time called the books of Rye. We'll get to see KX KX Koch's excuse me storyline and his sort of backstory in a spinoff called the books of Koch, etc. But this particular prequel that I'm working on or that I'm brainstorming right now is a four book tetralogical prequel that deals with the backstory of two particular characters who have become an, uh, sort of a source of interest in book number three of the books of Ezekiel and will continue to be a source of interest throughout the series up until a certain point. And not only will we see the backstory between these two characters unfold, but we'll also get to see the last four years of what's been happening in the world of the story. So the books of Ezekiel starts in year 2155. The prequel tetralogy that I'm writing for this series is starting in the year 2150, 2151. So you'll get to see a lot of the characters that you meet in this particular series in the books of Ezekiel. You'll get to see what they were doing prior to sort of the explosive opening events in the books of Ezekiel itself. A part of the reason why I'm developing that, honestly, is not just because I want more properties and I want to write more books and make myself even more crazy than I already am, but me writing a backstory, a sort of a more defined backstory, because I know what the general backstory is, but having a more detailed, step-by-step, -step, actually written out backstory also helps me to go forward with the current story and drop a lot of Easter eggs, drop a lot of motive and ethics and character wounds that I know are there, but that I haven't quite connected the dots around with regard to how they got these wounds, with regard to how these Easter eggs came about. And so me developing the backstory and then also writing the current story at the same time, for me, is helping me to make an even stronger story, wherein the two worlds connect, but they also hint at each other and hark back to each other. And the backstory gives a lot more depth and a lot more nuance to the current story and the current story as you're reading it will also give a lot more depth and nuance to the backstory um, and obviously there are certain things that are going to be foreshadowed in the backstory that come true in the current story and things that are happening in the current story that are a direct result of what happened you know four years prior to this series even beginning so it's helping me not only in a, um, hey, I want to write more books way, but it's helping me in a dramaturgical way for me to just fortify the plot, the time, the events, the characters, and everything that is required of developing a very in-depth, nuanced, sociological, and micro-social world as well. So... I'd like to think that me writing this backstory series is actually just me doing a lot of world building to support the current series. That's sort of how I'm spinning it for myself right now, okay? Just like stop judging me. Okay, so I did a lot of that. Did a lot of development for Asylum, the series, as I, as I told you. I have also been working on my when in rome pilot i actually finished the third draft this week so i guess i've been getting a lot done just not as much as i would normally get done 
I finished draft number three of When in Rome, the actual TV script itself. And then I started working on a draft four, which is going to entail a very close reading of the script, line by line by line. And I'm doing that in conjunction with my mentor, who is really amazing, very well, um, rena- well known and renowned um, writer in her own right, and is also just pretty much an expert. And is helping me to voluntarily helping me to tighten up my story, really, you know, get the dialogue on point, really just improve the action and just take my entire script to the next level with these small mini micro tweaks that are really important. You know, sometimes we think that a product is really good and I really like my product. This is my first real completed full TV pilot, honestly, and I'm actually pretty proud of it despite the fact that it's my first. I know that I'm sort of young in terms of you know being a writer in this capacity. And I'm sure 10 years down the line, I'll look back on this TV pilot and think it's crap because I'll be a much better writer. But for what it's worth right now, I really do like the pilot that I've come up with. And going through it line by line to just tweak those little tiny things and basically tighten the screws on every single page I know is going to elevate it just one more level that is going to be phenomenal, in my opinion. And it doesn't mean it's going to be the best script in the universe, but it's going to be a script that is 10 times better than anything I could have done on my own. So not only is the script getting better, I really appreciate these sessions that I have with this particular mentor of mine because it's making me a better writer. As she's teaching me, how to do things and why I should do things. These are bits and pieces of knowledge that I'm going to put into my toolbox so that I can take that into the next script that I write, whether it's a screenplay or a TV pilot. So that's really exciting. And also, I mean, script readers and people who work with you this closely on your script literally cost thousands of dollars in Hollywood. And A lot of the people who are offering these services don't even have the resume that my mentor has. My mentor, just to toot her horn a little bit because she's amazing, has gotten accepted to not one but two television writing programs. And and I mean like the big ones for the TV writing fellowships. Um, You guys might have heard of um, the Disney writing fellowship. Um, They also have a directing fellowship. The Fox Network Writing Fellowship, the Warner Brothers, the CBS Diversity um, Program. I think it's called the CBS Diversity Program. I'm not really sure. But this CBS has a uh, has a writing fellowship. The NBC Writers on the Verge Writing Fellowship. Nickelodeon has one. Sesame Street has one. So many places have these places. I think HBO also has one, but it's a little bit more like exclusive. And I'm not going to tell you which ones my mentor has gotten into because they're all prestigious and I don't want to like blow her spot per se, but she's gotten into two of them. It is damn near impossible to get to even one of these programs. Thousands of writers. And I mean, like some who are the best in the in the industry, some who even have careers already apply to these programs and a lot of them don't get in. And not only was my mentor able to get in once but she got in a second time and she was staff on a show working on this working on that and just having her expertise and helping me to up uplift and sort of level my writing up is such a blessing so I have the rest of the semester at this point to really pick her brain and to like get trained and I'm definitely going to do that so I'm excited about that so that's what I've been doing so I guess it is kind of a big deal in terms of my time commitments and what I've been achieving, but I don't I don't know, I don't give myself enough credit. Next week definitely will be a massive, massive podcast because it is episode number 100, yay! And I will be literally doing a s- analysis, let's put it that way. I was gonna call it a synthesis. It's really a synthesis and an analysis of the past 10 years of me not even really being a creative because I didn't start that journey 
officially until 2013. But realistically, I did start becoming more serious about my novel writing in about 2009, right? Anyway, I will be doing a synthesis and analysis of the past 10 years of me being a creative, literally from May 2009 to May 2019 how I started, how I grew, my major milestones, and basically how I got to this place right here, right now. Wow. And just thinking about it, it has been quite the decade, quite the decade. I mean, I've grown so much. I've learned so much. I've gained so much. I've lost so much. I've changed a lot. The core of who I am, I don't think has changed too much, but in terms of how I deal with things and handle things, I think has changed significantly. So I'm looking forward to that. That will be my lovely episode number 100. And I am psyched. And then after that will be episode 101, which will deal with my thoughts on my MFA program in generative dramaturgy here at the University of Arizona. And then my thoughts also on whether or not an MFA in general is required for you to go and pursue a career as an artist. The ups, the downs, the nitty and the gritty. So just stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, guys, keep it indie, keep writing, stay badass, keep creating, and I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.